we're going to be working on the chain rule today. And we're going to learn how the chain rule we know from Calculus 1 can be extended to the chain rule for Calculus 3. This isn't really hard uh, information here. It's basically following a rule, but let's find out where the rule comes from so that we have a reason to be working with something. Now from the days of yore, let's remember how the chain rule works. So the chain rule is basically taking the derivative of a composed function. So I want the derivative of that composed function. Now the rule that we all learn is I need to take the derivative of f times the derivative of g. And then in the original derivative of f prime, I want to put the original g. That's how we learned it. That's how we end up learning it. But when we start learning it, we actually learn it or should learn it another way. So I'm going to describe my comp composition of functions slightly different. I'm going to say z equals f of t and t equals g of x. So you see if I took what g equals here and substituted in for t here, I would have f of g of t. So this is another way of describing my composed function. So if I want to calculate dz dx, which is basically the derivative of f of g of x, that's going to equal the change in z with respect to t times the change in t with respect to x. Now logically you can see that if you want to quote unquote cancel the dt's, it works out very nicely. But this is the theory that we use or the idea that we use when we extend the chain rule to calculus 3 or more dimensions or more interesting dimensions. So now let's do that real quickly here. So we're going to extend to this. I have z equals f of x, y, so a function of two variables now. And I'm going to say this x is a function of t and that y is a different function of t. Now what we can do is just substitute the g and the h back in there and then z becomes a function of one of variables. So that's going to be f of g of t comma h of t if I do the substitution and then z is a function of t. And then we can use Calc 1 rules. But we don't want to do that because we already know how to do that. So instead of taking this step, we're going to learn the Calculus 3 rules. Okay, so our goal is to find dz dt. Because technically, z is a function of t only. And this is not a partial derivative. This is derivative of z with respect to t because again you can see here z is a function of one variable based on how I have this defined. So this is equal to what? What is this? Let's use what we know from the past and derive it. Let's figure it out. So let's do some preliminary stuff here. Um, we know that we can say that delta x with respect to t is approximately equal to dx dt. We talked about in class how delta x, whoops, this should be delta here, delta x with respect to t, delta t, that's a big jump, and dx dt is a small jump. We can say that this is approximately equal, though. We can also say delta y with respect to delta t is equal to dy dt, approximately. Again, big interval, tiny interval, but they're approximately equal to each other. So using a little algebra, I can say delta x is approximately equal to dx dt times delta t. And I can say that delta y is approximately equal to dy dt delta t. Now we're going to use the differential from section 14.3. So if I go to page 739 in the book, you can look up the differential and that's what I'm going to use. So I know from that page that delta z is equal to the partial of z with respect to x times delta x plus the partial of z with respect to y times delta y. Now, um, we see in, in page 736, we use f sub x and f sub y, but f we can say is z and x and y, so we can rewrite using the same notation or different notation, the same concept, okay? So now I'm going to take these guys here and substitute them in here to get an equal statement. 
So I can say then that delta z is equal to the partial of z with respect to x. Now delta x is dx dt delta t. And then partial of z with respect to y. Delta y is equal to dy dt delta t. All right, so I just did substitution using the differential. Now if I divide everything by delta t, so if I divide every term by delta t, so delta t, delta t, delta t, these guys go away. And I'm left with delta z over delta t. And as delta t goes to zero, we can rewrite this side as dz dt, small intervals, is equal to delta z with respect to x, dx dt, not partial, plus the partial z with respect to y times dy dt. And this is actually the chain rule that you can see in your textbook in section 14.6. So this is the chain rule as given in section 14.6. Now, uh, this is one case where we have z as, a, or z as a function of t alone, but what if we have this case? What if c is a function of x and y, and x and y are functions of two variables themselves? That's the weird thing. Um, how do I deal with that? Well, it's really not that big a deal. Uh, in this case, if I do the substitution, I have z equals f of g of uv comma h of uv. So z is actually a function of u and v. So when I try to find derivatives, I actually am not finding a, a strict derivative like dz dt, but I'm actually finding a partial derivative. I'll have a partial of z with respect to u, and then I'll have a partial of z with respect to v. So because z is a function of two variables, I will have partial derivatives as opposed to not partial derivatives. Okay, the big deal is the difference here. In this problem, z is, is a function of one variable. In this problem, z is a function of two variables. So how does it differ? Well, not that much. So if I utilize the same formula, um, I have to be careful of the letters here so I don't trip up. This is going to be, if I think about this guy, partial of z with respect to x, just like it is here, times now, i got to think about this. Here. I'm, I'm not going to do dx dt. There's no t. I'm not going to do dx du. I'm going to do partial of x with respect to u. That will make sense. I can actually take the partial of this function with respect to one variable. And then I'm going to add to that the partial of z with respect to y times Let's see, let's think about this. Partial of y with respect to u. There we go. It works similarly for dz dv. How is it going to differ? So instead of the u's, I'll have v. Partial of z with respect to x. I'll take this function, take the partial with respect to x. Multiply it times this function, partial with respect to v. And then I take the partial of z with respect to y, and I multiply it times the partial of y with respect to v. So we have three formulas here. And the key to using these three formulas is no, looking at the original information that we're given. Now let's go ahead and do some problems uh, using these formulas so that we can learn how to do those.